So he's saying, First Peter four and fourteen, if ye be reproached, be disgraced for the name of a Mashiach, for by Hashem a Mashiach ever shine in the name of the Lord and Savior. Happy are ye. But the most I said, whatever you, get, you take with what? Ecclesiastes 2 and 4. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. And be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. So whatever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Say, if ye be reproached for the, the name of a Mashiach Yavashai, or by Hashem a Mashiach Yavashai, in the name of the Lord and Savior, happy are ye. Hear that? Happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of the Most High rests upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. That you're going to continue in the right way. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. You're a murderer if you hate your brother. Or you murder somebody unjustly. Or as a thief, stealing from your brother. Or as an evildoer. Or as a busybody. In other men's matters, you know, always dipping in somebody else's business. That is, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of the Most High. Judgment will begin with us, the children of Israel. We who live in a house family of the Most High, who are the twelve tribes of Israel. And if it first begin at us, it first begin with us. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? What's going to be the end for you that want to do your own thing, that don't want to? Follow the gospel of the Most High. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the unrighteous and the sinner appear? You hear that? The righteous scarcely going to be saved. So all you holy rollers out there that think you'd have made it already and think you so holy and so high-minded in your own mind when it's telling us the right and if the righteous scarcely shall be saved the righteous scarcely be saved where shall the unrighteous and the sinner appear where should it appear in the lake of fire well, the worms never die and the fires never quench. That's where they're going to appear. So where are you going to appear? Where you want to be? Hopefully, amongst those that's going to the kingdom. It's very important that we see this. And it's all about changes I've been saying, you know, throughout this lesson. We got to change. We got to go back to what it is that is written. Look at Proverbs 8, the 8th chapter. Proverbs 8 and 4. Proverbs 8 and 4. It says, Unto you, O men, I call. And my voice is to the sons of man. Because it's going to be a, it's a job, a big job for the men that the Most High has called. And his voice is to the sons of man to bring forth our nation. Women are not called to do this. You have your job to do. And just being virtuous, dealing with the house and dealing with, you know, the general of the house and doing all the things that it takes to raise children and, and uh, be the, you know, virtuous among the house. When you look at virtuous woman, Ezekiel 34 and 3. Ezekiel 34, 31. Still like it. Ezekiel. 34 and 31. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pastor, are men. And I am your power, said the Most High Power. 
the pastor of the Most Highs is men. He called men to rule over his nation, the nation of Israel. So it's very important that we uh, we see this, lady, so that you can fall in order with what the Most High has set up, rather than being out of order and the things that you don't want to happen happen. It's very important. Look at uh, <coughs> Revelation 21 and 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. See, Most High is... He's called men. But actually, you know, once women have been taught under men, it tells you the, the sons and the daughters shall prophesy. But you got to be taught. So most of us deal with women too. But the head is the man. You see what I'm saying? Women have their job to do too. You know, so let me give you an example of uh, a woman's job. And dealing with what she's supposed to be doing to uh, for the nation to be able to help um, our nation, you know, grow and so forth. Look at uh, Titus, the second chapter, and verse three. Titus 2 and 3. The aged women, likewise, women that's been in this truth for a long time, and those that are elderly women, the aged woman, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, righteousness, keeping the laws of the Most High. Not false accusers, meaning lying on people, not giving them much wine, not drinking a lot. Teachers of good things. Good things are what? The, what's good? The law is good. Teachers of the laws. Now it's going to tell you who to teach. That they may teach the young women. Don't say no men. That they may teach the young women to be sober. So older women are supposed to be teaching the younger women, being examples for the younger women. How they should be. That they may teach the young women to be sober, meaning not to be drinking a lot, to be focused, not to be dealing with them spirits they call liquor spirits, not to have all those spirits in them, but to be sober, to love their husbands. You got to teach them to love their, how are you going to teach them to love your husband if you don't love your own husband? So that's why it got to be a change of mind, regardless. Maybe you maybe you uh, have problems, but you got to teach them to love their husbands. Hopefully you're an example that you're loving your husband, that you can show them how to love their husbands, to love their children, how to love their children. Some of them don't love their children properly. They definitely don't love their husbands like they should. This is what the aged woman is supposed to be teaching a younger woman. To be sober, focused, not drinking a lot. To love their husbands, to love their children. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home. 
Let you know what the aged woman is supposed to be doing so that she could be an example for the younger woman. Keep us at home. Good. Obedient to their own husbands. See? Tell them you got to be obedient. Don't listen to all that madness. You got to check them. No, you're supposed to be obedient to your own husbands. That's why women got to, you got to make sure you know who you're getting with. Well, you already with them, you with them. This is what it's saying. Obedient to their own husbands. That the word of the Most High be not blasphemed. Remember, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is unforgivable in this life and the life to come. So we have to follow what is written. And we take it to mind for everything, you know. Because you mostly sit in class or whenever you listen to whatever. It's mainly about men. So now it's about women, now there's a problem. I know already because every time you bring up something about women, it's always a problem. The way this world is now. But you think I care? I don't care. The most I don't care. But he wants you to know. If you don't know, then you're going to do what's wicked and then you're going to go be thrown in the lake of fire. That's not love for you. How's that love? That's not love. That's why, like I say, there's a job to do. A big job to do. Just a matter of who's really going to really follow suit of what needs to be done in doing this. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 7 chapter. First Corinthians 7 and 1. It says, Now concerning the things where ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid some occasion, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. So rather than, you know, going to fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. You see, you know, being there, right there for him. The wife and the husband giving due benevolence to each other. You know, doing for each other. <clears throat> the wife has not power over her own body, <coughs> but the husband. So women trying to hold out to be mean to their husbands and not giving none. The wife has not power over her own body, but the husband. And likewise also, the husband has not power over his own body, but the wife. I mean, you're supposed to be holding out on each other. She wanted, she got it. You want it, you got it. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time. Don't defraud each other from having sexual intercourse, except it be with consent. Both of you agree for a time. That ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer. You fast and pray. Let you know you fast and pray. You're not supposed to be having sex. You give yourself to fasting and prayer. And come together again. Come together again. That Satan tempt you not for your incontent. 
tendency of you not being together. <coughs> because marriage is consummated by sexual intercourse and continually nourished by sexual intercourse. So he said come together and have sexual relations so that Satan don't come in and get you. Remember, when did Satan come to my check of a shot? When he fasted and prayed. 40 days, here he come. Because there's a result. You receive what you would say, fast and prayer, get rid of evil spirits. Get rid of who's evil. He is. Get rid of them. When you fast in prayer, they say you got to come together. So, here he don't sneak in there and bring that evil thought. Remember, many are, just, many are deceived by their own vain opinion and an evil suspicion overthrowing their judgment. So, you don't allow evil to come in there. That's drawing him to you. He said, but I speak this by permission and not of commandment. So he's speaking by permission. Most I wouldn't give him permission to do anything that's not right. He said, but for I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man have his proper gift of the most high, one after this matter and another after that. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, the unmarried, don't have a husband, and the widows, those that have lost their husband in death. It is good for them if they abide even as I, but if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. It's better to marry than to be burning. Design it. And go out there and do something where you end up in the lake of fire. And unto the married, I command, yet not I, but the most high, let not the wife depart from her husband. And if she, and, but and, if she depart, if she leave, let her remain unmarried, meaning I have no sexual relations with nobody else, that consummates marriage, or be reconciled to her husband, come back to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife, but let the husband put away his wife. You're supposed to be put away your woman. Men, they was getting a bill of divorce or anything. And women today, they with a man, I don't like you no more, they go out, because they know that they, they, whatever, every man, like a woman could have every man that says. She laid out, open her left for any man, every man. I want to tell him, okay, I want you to work to get him. And now it don't work out. Now she a whore. He said, but if she, but if, but and if she depart, she break up with the man, separate from the man, let her remain unmarried. Or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. Don't let the husband put away his wife by leaving her alone or just, just deserting her, putting her, giving her a divorce and so forth. But if but to the rest speak I, not the most high. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. So don't put her away. She be pleased as well, don't let her put her away. Because most I hate putting her away. Say, and the woman which has an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. But if the unbelieving depart, if you have a husband and he leave you, or you have a wife and she leave you, let him depart. Let him depart. Let him go. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. But the most I have called us to peace. A lot of times you had, they leave like that, you find yourself in a peaceful world because it was chaos. So chaos, wasn't, things wasn't right. So if they leave, if, but if the unbelieving depart, they leave you, they leave, let them depart. Let them depart, it says. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. But the most I have called us to peace. But what knoweth thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knoweth thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? But as the most I have distributed to every man, as the most I have called every one, so let him walk. And so ordain I in all churches. So, jump down to verse uh, 
25. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Most High, yet I give my judgment as one that have obtained mercy of the Most High to be faithful. I suppose, therefore, that this is good. For the present distress, I say that is that it is good for a man's soul to be. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. So you you with a woman, seek not to be loosed from your woman. You don't you don't and if you don't have a woman, don't seek a wife. But and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. <laughs> But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. Because the time is short, meaning a lot of work got to be done. And wives got to hear this so that they don't be tripping out and going out there saying to be thrown in the lake of fire because of the time is short. And they that have wives going to be like they don't have one. Wives apart. And they that weep as though they wept not. And they that rejoice as though they rejoice not. And they that buy as though they possess not. In these end days, these end times. And they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passes away. What you see in this world, that's why you got to become a new creature. Everything you see in this world going to pass away. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Most High. See, when you you more into tune into the spirit, you are unmarried. You tune into the spirit of the Most High. How He may please the Most High. How you may please the Most High. Do what the Most High would have us to do. To please Him. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world. How he may please his wife. You mad, you're going to be concerned about how you can make her happy. Please her. There's a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cared for the things of the world, of the most high, like the unmarried man. Same thing with the unmarried woman. Care for the things of the most high. That she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But see, the thing about it, you can't be uh, holier than thou where you think you so much better than everybody because you're not married or somebody married and you're not married and all of a sudden now you're better than them because you're celibate or however you are in your mind to think that you're more righteous than someone that is married because you're unmarried. No. The unmarried woman cared for the things of the most high that she may be holy, both in body and in spirit. But she that is married care for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. Remember, said her husband going, she going to be subject to her husband, husband shall rule over her. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, I don't want to trap you up in anything, but for that which is comely or beautiful and pleasing, and that ye may attend upon the most high without distraction. But if a man think that he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age, meaning she is at the age that she can get married and needs so require, let him do what he will. He sinneth not. Let them marry. Meaning let him have, you know, sexual intercourse to consummate the marriage. Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart and his mind, having no necessity, but have power over his own will. Some men have power over their will. They're not dealing with the flesh. They ain't, the flesh ain't, ain't moving them, but they're rolling more in the spirit. And have so decreed in his heart and his mind that he will keep his virgin, do it well. They keep her, you do it well. Until the time that you decide to consummate the marriage, he's saying. So then, he that giveth her in marriage doeth well. But he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. Hmm. He that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. 
The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is not at, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will. Only Hashem and Mashiach was shot. That's if they you you together, a man and a woman together as husband and wife, you know, operating in that capacity. Because remember he said uh, in verse fifteen, but if the unbeliever depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but the Most High have called us to peace. Because it could be a problem. It could be not, you don't really get along. They leave, say you ain't under bondage in that case. Verse 40, but she is happy if she so abide after my judgment. And I think also that I have the spirit of the Most High, which is the spirit of a Mashiach. So, that's a little meat. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Virtuous. Can we go to Virtuous? Virtuous woman? Proverbs 31 and 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? Who can find a virtuous woman? Hmm. Who can find a virtuous woman? Asking the question. It is Solomon. This King Solomon. He had a thousand. We read about him. He had a thousand. He said he ain't find one. He said, who can find a virtuous woman? Oh, but they there. For her price is far above rubies. Her price is far above rubies. See, he might not find one because he was dealing with them strange women, too. You know, think about it. Because I know we got the best women in the world. When they on point and down with you, brothers. You know, nothing better than our women, shoot. He probably had it, then he went with those strange women. They, what did it say? They're going to turn your mind away from the Most High. So must, you, must your mind turn away from the Most High? He ain't operating right with the Israelite woman. She probably wasn't. She's like, shoot, man. Because you see, he built all them idol temples. they like, man, you done went off. So naturally, they ain't going to be down with him. But he did that at his old age. Verse 11. The heart or the mind of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. He trusts in this woman that's virtuous that he don't need whenever they go out there to war or and they kill the enemy. He don't need to get all the diamonds and the rubies and all the things that they get at the end of the war. He has no need of spoil. I Meaning she really doing some things, bringing it in. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. It's a virtuous woman. She would do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. Meaning she know how to sew wool and flax and she worketh willing, willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. This virtuous woman like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. It's meaning she might have to go who knows, miles and miles away from home to go to the store and get the food. She rises also while it is yet night. She's getting up early. While it's yet night, dark outside. Here she can see's up. Hmm. She rises also while it is yet night. Five o'clock in the morning. She up doing things. And giving meat to her household, feeding the household, and a portion to her maidens. She considered a field and buy of it. With the fruit of her hands, she planted a vineyard. I mean, she go out there and plant crops and so forth. Vineyard, that's grapes. She girded her loins with strength, strong, and strengthened her arms. Her arms are strong. She perceived that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. Meaning she could be up at night. 
Still got to get up early in the morning, as you said, to take care of everyone, feed everyone. That's a virtuous woman. She left her hands to the spindle and her hands hold this, this, this staff. She's sewing. It's part of being virtuous. She's sewing. She know how to sew. You know she know how to cook already. She can't cook no meals for the household if she can't cook. Now I'm saying she know how to sew. She stretches out her hand to the poor. She helping the poor, finding ways that she can help the poor. Yay. She reaches forth her hands to the needy. Thinking about how she can take care of the needy. The poor. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. Snow don't stop nothing. So you be raising the snow, don't stop nothing. Going out there just like any other day. Taking care of business. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. For all her household are clothed with scarlet. Red. <laughs> red is her color she likes. She makes of herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates. That's where the elders are. Her husband is known as the elders. Where the elders go, her husband is known. When he sitteth among the elders of the land. When he sitteth among the elders, he's known. She maketh fine linen and selleth it. Now she's got her own business. She's selling fine linen. She ain't at home and a man going out there doing everything and then she's sitting there like she the king and the queen. No. She would say she maketh fine, she maketh herself covers the tapestry of her clothes with silk and purple. Uh, verse 24, she maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivered girdles unto the merchant. She saw him making things and selling it. Strength and honor are her clothing. And she shall rejoice in time to come. See, all this is for the time to come. She's going to rejoice in the kingdom. She opened her mouth with wisdom. She have wisdom. You can ask her something, she can, she'll find the answer for you. She opened her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. Her speech is kindness. You know, it's, it's beautiful. Look at uh, Ecclesiasticus. Um, 26 and 13. The grace of a wife, the light of her husband, and her discretion will fatten his bones. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Most High, and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. See? So, Proverbs 31 and 26. She opened up her mouth with wisdom. Her speech is bringing forth the proper application of knowledge that she has learned from the instructed by her husband. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. You hear that? She's loving. Silent and loving woman is a gift of the most high. Not woman that's running her mouth, right around talking all the time. Being a nag and getting on a man's nerve. No, that ain't virtuous. Always got something to say. That's not virtuous. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the most high. It says, she opened her mouth with wisdom. Verse 26 of Proverbs 31st chapter. And her tongue is the law of kindness. Her tongue is the law of kindness. Wow, a law of kindness? Meaning she's calm, cool, collective, and kind. How you can't love this? How you can't love someone like this? Overly love someone like this. She looking well through the ways of her household. She's taking care of her household. Looking around and she's doing something. She's working, trying to keep her household in order. And eat if not the bread of idleness. She's not dealing with idleness. Here come the devil. When you got all that idle time, here come the devil. 
Because you're dealing with idleness. See? Because you deal with idleness, it, it will, you know, invite demons in. That's why I say, and she eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Who wouldn't praise a woman of this nature? A virtuous woman. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excelleth them all. That's right. And there's women that excel them all. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excelleth them all. Yes. Favor is deceit, and beauty is vain. Favor is deceit, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Most High, she shall be praised. A woman that feareth the Most High, gonna, if you fear the Most High, to get of knowledge, you're going to follow what the Most High Word says. And you're going to be in order with what all that has come out. There's a lot more. But all that's come out in this lesson, you should be able to look at it and take heed and follow it. To have the fear of the Most High. Favor is deceitful and beauty of vain, but a woman that feared the Most High, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Everyone will be talking about her. The elders, from the elders on down to everyone else. Give her praise. Now this virtuous woman that tells you in Ecclesiastes 26, brothers, in verse 1, and sisters, blesses the man that has a virtuous wife. Blesses the man that has a virtuous wife. For the number of his days shall be double. Now, I look at this, it's like, okay, well, if a man have a virtuous wife, the number of his days is going to be double. Now, a woman that's contrary to being virtuous, she's going to make his life in shorter. Then double. Because she ain't virtuous. Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife, for the number of his days shall be double. Double. Man. A virtuous woman rejoices her husband, and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. That's what the most I said. I mean... What more could you ask for? Fulfill the years of your life in peace. A good wife is a good portion which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the most high. See, you fear the most high? Most people are not talking about fearing the most high. Being afraid, be scared of the most high, respecting the most high. Most people ain't talking about that. But it says, a good wife is a good portion which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Most High. See? And see, when we look at our... Uh, Verse 15, Ecclesiastes 26 and 15, it says, A shame face and faithful woman is a double grace. Shame face and faithful woman is a double grace. And her continent mind cannot be valued. As the sun, when it arises in the highest heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. Keeping her house in order. The general of the house, we like to say. The beauty of a good wife. See, beauty is just not uh, from sight. Most most men look at, okay, well, it means nothing more beautiful. That's why he tell us in uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 25 and 21, it says, stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire her not for a pleasure. It's about the inner woman. The inner, what's inside of her? What does she bring out from inside? 
the inner woman. That's why I'm telling you. As the sun, this is Ecclesiastes 26 and 16, as the sun when it arises in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the order of her house. She's doing this. You're looking at it. Wow. That's what I say. Knowing all these scriptures, then you can make a decision and the right decision when you see this. Verse 20. When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession through all the field, through all the field of the world, got a fruitful possession through all the field, sow it with thine own seed. Sow with your own seed. Your own sperm, your own copulation, your own lineage. Trusting in the goodness of thy stock, the goodness of your stock. So thy race, a race is in the Bible, y'all. So thy race, which thou leaveth, shall be magnified, having the confidence of their good descent. Coming from the stock of a man that's Israelite and a woman that's Israelite. So you have a race, your lineage that will be continued. With good stock that it came from. So you have good to sit. <laughs> and harlot, verse 20, a harlot, a prostitute shall be accounted as spittle. A prostitute shall be accounted as spittle. But a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. A married woman is a tower of death. It's a tower against death to her husband. That's powerful. Verse 26, a woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. But she that dishonoreth him in her pride, we went through pride, Shall be counted unrighteous of all. Hmm. So it's very important that we uh we look at this and we you work to be virtuous, not just in your own mind. I heard women say I'm virtuous, but they ain't virtuous. No way, shape, or form. They ain't even virtuous in the way they act being around the congregation. This is very important that we look at this and uh, hopefully, you know, you'll take heed and study this and make a change. Um, look at... Uh, 